The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Friday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading and markets picking things up in positive territory, backing off from the highs we had yesterday. Quite an acceleration when you're talking about uh, almost a percentage and a half from the highs to lows. You were trading at 40. 260 just after I got off the program at about 10 a.m. Eastern time when our man Basil Chapman took over. You trade down to a low at about three o'clock. You do get a little bit of a lift to the upside for the final hour of trading yesterday. Overnight, you catch a lift basically sitting right at where we were about 1 p.m. Eastern time. That price level 42.35 in the S&Ps. We're up right now about half a percent, trading at 42.32. NASDAQ 100, we're up about six tenths percent. NASDAQ 100, you trade down about 275 points from high to lows yesterday. We're right where we closed out Wednesday action, though, in the NASDAQ 100 at about 13,400. The Dow up 150 points. That's about four tenths percent in the green. You got the Russell this morning up by about 11 points, half a percent. Bitcoin backs off from the highs yesterday. Talk about getting close to 25,000. You miss it by 20 bucks, 24,980. The price of Bitcoin. Ethereum, just under 2,000. You make it to 1947. We're trading at 1888 right now. Gold contract catching a little bit of a bid, even in the last hour or so. Gold trades from 1800 to 1810 we're positive by three dollars on the session silver contract at about twenty dollars and fifty cents a little bit of a lift as well and we jump to i want to take a look at that natural gas actually uh taking a look at natural gas on the daily maybe we're climbing back up to that nine point natural gas trading basically negative nine ticks on the session at 878 but look at the volatility we've had in the last few days back to a 15 minute chart there's your volatility on Monday. You're trading at 750. Got about as close as you could yesterday to nine dollars on natural gas. We've backed off a bit. One of the things you had the IEA yesterday coming out, increasing the consumption estimates per day by 380,000 barrels of crude. Why are they increasing the consumption estimates for the barrels of crude? Because what's going to happen, folks? Natural gas is so expensive that people are going to start trying to use oil as energy versus natural gas that's going to bump the demand for barrels of crude interesting action in commodities always what are they saying commodities best best cure for higher prices is higher prices you're seeing it play out uh in the contract of natural gas because what's happening right you have natural gas high they're going to leave natural gas they're going to seek other ways to provide energy now, these are just ebbs and flows that are going to continue in a big way. Our man, Ed Young, right? Got to love it. Totally, man. Uh, it's such a cool saying. In commodities, it is the real deal, folks. Uh, you get to higher prices. It's the same thing. And, and I'm not even a, a farmer, folks, but you see it in terms of crops, right? If crops are high, what are they going to do? You use your land, not to plant the crops that are abundant that you're not going to get as much money for. What are you going to do? You're going to plant the crops okay, that have the highest price. And what does that do? You provide supply, supply equals demand at a lower price point, that brings down the supply. Interesting action though, when you got natural gas and crude, both of them pretty elevated levels uh, when you look at that in a big way. And pretty remarkable, right, that where natural gas is, you actually have consumption going up for crude when it's sitting at $90 a barrel. That should give you some context, folks, of where you have a potential lower boundary for support. When you have natural gas being so expensive that people are flocking to crude at $90 a barrel, it puts things in context of how much crude actually costs compared to other energy sources like natural gas. A little bit of commodity segment to kick things off. We jump over to notes and bonds. Up by eight ticks, there's your daily. We spiked to a high 10 days ago of 122.02. Uh, since then, we got lower prices and higher yields. Right now, you're talking about a yield. Let me pull that up. 
2.85%, we'll call it 2.85%. There's your 15 minute action. We dive lower yesterday, 2.85%, the yield on the 10 year. Remember he said we're gonna stop at 3% for a while. Remember he said we're gonna stop, my goodness, at 3.5% for a while. Then you trade down to 2.5% almost. Now we're up to 2.85%. If you think volatility is over in this market, folks, just watch the moves we have going on in notes and bonds. Because as long as you have that type of volatility in the note and bond market, that is an example of the volatility that you will see play out in the equity market as well. All right, let's jump over to the VIX volatility index. We got a 19 handle on Wednesday for the first time like six months, I think. We're back above 20, uh, and just like that, we're back to a 19 handle this morning. You take a look at the daily, and April 21st, let's see, so April 21st, you got a low in 1981, 1975, what did we get a couple days ago, 1954. Yeah, had not seen those prices in the VIX since against April, so four months, I guess, on April. Uh, you make it down to actually 18, and you're talking about all the way back to January. Not so sure we'll get there just yet. Well, we got a lot of strength in this market, man. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks. Apple, one of the strongest. I mean, we are basically bumping up to the upper boundary line of Apple. You make it up to Apple March 30th. Apple's been so strong, man. Uh, the high, almost 180. Your technical high, 182.94. Absolutely remarkable, folks, that Apple at that time, to hit a $3 trillion market cap valuation, needed to hit 182, like 86, something like that. It was 182 and change. That's the number they need to hit. They did hit it. They hit the $3 trillion mark. We got all the headlines. Uh, and that basically crowned the beginning of the bear market. You almost make it back up to that level back in March. And again, we've almost climbed to that level. I mean, right now, folks, for Apple, just for some context, Apple is trading at prices that you were trading at December 21st. Yeah. Yeah. Basically getting it all back. Pretty remarkable. You are $10 off the high. Apple does have, I mean, technically you're 14 bucks, I guess, off the high. Apple does have 16 billion shares outstanding. So even $10 from the high, you're talking about $160 billion in market cap still off of the highs. But as I just mentioned, they've got 16 billion shares, folks. We just rose $40. Okay, you're talking about more than $600 billion in market cap created. I talked about it yesterday, and that was after sliding $50, which is $800 billion of destruction. So Apple loses $800 billion from the span of about April 1st to June 16th, 17th. So two and a half months, they lose $800 billion. And in the span of about, we'll call it two months now, I guess. We're, we're inching towards the middle of August. In the span of two months, right, what do you do? You get back $600 plus billion of market cap. Talk about some volatility, man. That's Apple for you right now. We jump over to Amazon shares. Amazon going to open up a little bit this morning as well. You're back to 142. They give back some decent price action yesterday after accelerating higher on that CPI data on Wednesday. Amazon up about a buck fifty right now. That's going to be a one percent pop at the open. S&P's continuing to inch higher right now. We're trading at 42.35. We jump over to Microsoft shares. Yeah, you're going to open about two two dollars high from Microsoft. Let's see how Tesla's trading this morning. There's a lift for you. Tesla going to open up about ten dollars this morning. We check out Twitter how they're trading. Twitter basically flat at about 44 bucks. Yeah, Disney with their earnings yesterday, big numbers for Disney. Uh, they give back some of that with the market selling off from about 123.52 down to 118. You're up a bit for Disney shares this morning. NASDAQ 100 just got above where we were at about 4.30 in the morning. We're trading up 100 points on the dot right now. 13,411. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back. Go over some of the equities that are moving this morning. I'll be right back in three minutes. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. 
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now up 25 points. It's going to be interesting to see how we finish this week. It's been quite a week. We got the CPI data on Wednesday. We got PPI data yesterday. You catch a pop to 42.60. We're trading right now at 42.34. Uh, jumping around to some of the other stocks with earnings. Rivian, they are losing a lot of money, man. A lot more money than the market was thinking. And they're starting to take money in, though, at least. That would be the silver lining, I guess. Pretty interesting. you got actually no movement right now. You do have movement overnight. You're going to open right now within about 30 cents of where you were. Now, you talk about some volatility. Rivian had about a 10% move priced into either direction, $3.63. Okay, you're trading at about 39, 9 to 10% move priced in on their earnings. You check out the action right now, and you spike down immediately on their miss to 36.50, up to 40.65. You're trading right now at 39.35. They got rising costs in a big way, along with everybody else. Uh, maintain their full-year guidance for deliveries. That's probably the most important thing right now. Costs are very important as well. You saw this stock get punished, uh, but they need to start putting out cars, man. Second quarter revenue was higher than what they were thinking. But getting into the numbers, revenue, $364 million versus 337 Adjusted loss per share, 162 uh, versus 163 Net loss for the quarter, $1.7 billion. Now, they have $15.5 billion in cash, okay, but that's down from $17 billion March 31st. Yeah, they lost about a billion and a half dollars. It's confident the cash is enough to fund its operations until it launches its upcoming smaller product platform called R2 at its new factory in Georgia in 2025. Folks, 2025 is a long way away for a company losing money at the rate right now of more than $6 billion a year, okay? What is it to be exact? 6.8, $6.8 billion a year, okay? They only have $15.5 billion. And they're gonna make it to 2025, now they're taking in money, okay? Uh, it has 98,000 net pre-orders, okay? 
They confirm they still expect to make about 25,000 vehicles this year in line with the reduced guidance that they provided in March, but it's August. Um, so they're keeping to what they said in March. It now expects the full year adjusted loss, 5.4 billion. They were looking for 4.75 billion in May. So to put that in context, in the last three months, they have now said they're, they're gonna lose seven hundred million dollars more than they were thinking, 650 to be exact, all right? That's kind of the worry for a company like this, folks. Would not be surprising, okay, if you get a bid at all, which is what may hold this stock down for a while, all right? Talk about a demise, man, from 179.47 down to 19 bucks. Now you have doubled in price since their last earnings in May, but there is a very real chance they will have to go to market for funds, folks. I could see them doing an offering. I could see them doing something because they have $15.5 billion on the books, okay? And uh, I'm going to pull up more articles from them because I was reading one Bloomberg one last night. I mean, revenue, yeah, they're taking in $364 million. I think they sold four or 5,000 cars. Maybe that was it. They kicked things off. Uh, and that was versus $0 a year ago. I always said when they went public, man, credit to the management and ownership team getting a company to go public at a valuation of, I think they're approaching like $80 billion. What are they at right now? Had to be even more than that, man. They're at $35 billion right now. And that's with the price trading at about $40. Gee, so they were quadruple that. And even if you take where they were at about 100, that's two and a half, that's about a $100 billion market cap. Yeah, because what do they have? They have exactly, I believe, yeah, almost a billion shares outstanding. So for simple math, they have 900 million shares outstanding, uh, but pretty close to the to the value of, of, you know, they're at 38 bucks right now and they're trading with a market cap of 35 billion. So when they were, we're at one, sorry for jumping back and forth. When they were at 180, this company had a market cap of like $160 billion and they had no revenue. Try and use your brains the next time that happens, folks, and you see a company doing that. It seems too easy in retrospect, uh, but keep in mind the churn rate that they have going on right now and the fact that they're increasing those numbers. Just since May, they've said they're now going to lose $750 million more. They need to get through the next couple of years. We've seen how things play out with Tesla, right? Remember when Tesla was on the verge of almost collapse and that stock was getting pummeled? You may see Rivian having to go to the public for more money, man, because $15.5 billion seems like a lot, but not when you're losing almost $6 billion a year and costs are going up and the losses are being revised to the upside, okay? They're gonna have a lot of competition, man. EVs, they sure are. Uh, probably gonna be around in the long run. It's not gonna be one of those deals like Tesla that they make go BK, but you're talking about a company, folks, that's valued at $35 billion, and they've just begun taking in some revenue to the tune of $350 million, and they're losing $6 billion a year. Wild stuff, man, in this market across the board. All right, what else do we have pulled up here? Uh, yeah, Bank of America, they're saying the cash racing, racing the stocks and bonds as inflation's ease. Global equity funds. Talk about billions, man. $7.1 billion in the week through August 10th. Okay. Um, that's citing EPFR data. Not familiar. U.S. stocks saw inflows of $11 billion, the biggest in eight weeks. Rate-sensitive growth funds posted the largest influx since December. It would make sense with everything going on, right? We were talking to our man Kevin Hanks yesterday. We just got through arguably three of the biggest data points you get for the month at a time when the data is more important than ever. The Federal Reserve has told you we are on a hiking cycle, inflation is out of control, and we're going to watch the data points over this month and next month as we come into the September meeting. We just got the jobs report on Friday, 500,000 plus jobs added, 3.5% on inflation. You get CPI on Wednesday, month over month, zero. Problem, of course, is that we have negative price action in energy. We have positive price action still going on in food, uh, in shelter both big components of CPI. You get the PPI number on Thursday though, and what do we see? We see a decline uh, when the market was looking for an expectation. So it would make sense that money is flowing to some of those areas that might be sensitive to rates. Uh, financial stocks, stocks drew cash for a second straight week, marking a reversal of 18 weeks of outflows. Global, bond, uh, excuse, global bonds saw inflows of 11.7 billion and 4.3 billion pulled out of cash. U.S. stocks track the longest winning weekly streak since November. It's not really that big of a streak. I mean, yeah, you got four, four weeks there. The third one was barely. 
So Bank of America's own bull and bear indicator remains maximum bearish for a ninth week in a row, though that's often seen as a contrarian signal to buy. I mean, where's the upside on this market right now? That's that's what I try and figure out, right? I mean, we saw a little sell-off yesterday, all right? We got markets moving. We got notes and bonds moving pretty dramatically right now. Uh, where is the potential upside? Is it 4,600? It's possible. Not a lot of people thought we were going to drift up to 4,600 in March. And remember how quickly things turned around. We got through this data point, all right? But I was talking about it on my show yesterday, man. I'm going to talk about it again right now quickly. We might finish it up after the break, okay? But that CPI data that's being celebrated, folks, you saw Fed governors coming out already on the heels of the CPI data saying, good numbers, but I haven't seen anything that changes how fast I want to hike, right? You saw Kashkari coming out saying that. He's a voting member next year. He said he still wants to hike next year, okay? The reason why CPI went down so much in the month of July is because month over month, it was being compared to June. Here is what crude did for the month of June. You kicked off the month at 115, you went up to 120, and you closed out the month at about 110. Those influences are not going to be present when we get the August numbers unless crude's down at 65 to $70. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back for the open. In a time of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a seven million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. we got markets open. You're looking at an S&P up about half a percent right now, 20 points in the positive at 42.30. NASDAQ 100 up about two-thirds percent right at 13,400. And the Dow up about a third of percent, 33,425. We jump over to commodities. Crude down $1.72, but uh, quite a little pop recently from where we were trading. You back things up. That's last Friday. We were trading at 80. Is that right? Where am I? Yes, that's last Friday. We had a low of 87.01. We're trading right now 92.61. Backing off the highs, there's your 15 minutes action up to $95 yesterday. You almost hit that price action today as well. Volatility here to stay right now in that crude market in a big way. And how about natural gas as well, right? Natural gas, look at this thing, man. Uh, just since 7.30 this morning, up 35 cents, man, to 8.85. I mean, natural gas, folks, usually. To put that, you know, let's back it up even further here on a five-year weekly. Yeah, so you came, that's remarkable. You came into COVID at about 228. You do get spikes on this thing. Let's back it up even further. I mean, look at look, look at this move we're getting. Just wild stuff in natural gas, to say the least. All right, let's jump around to some of the equities that are moving this morning. We talked about Rivian. Honest Company, up 1.6% in the pre-market in spite of a wider than expected loss. So they do natural consumer products, okay? They now see a wider full-year loss than previously thought due to, due to what? Cost pressures, but expects improvement as the year goes on, including positive adjusted earnings for the fourth quarter. Hey, take a look at this stock. Whoops, HNST, Honest Company, okay? Uh, you open basically flat right now after their numbers. You take a look at this thing, though, which is why I bring it up. All right. I think that's going all the way back. No, it's not. Wow. Yeah, I got to go back. OK, this is when they go public. Is that right? Yes. So they go public, folks. May of 2021. And I forget who was involved in this. Is it Jessica Alba? I think uh, might be Gwyneth Paltrow. I should look it up. But I'm pretty sure it's Jessica Alba. It is Jessica Alba. Uh, and so uh, we have bought some of their products. We bought some of their overnight diapers or something like that. Listen, I'm all about saving the environment, man, recycling, um, doing all of that stuff. And just using products, especially on kids, babies, the skin, right? Natural products, et cetera. But I tell you, folks, I wasn't a fan. I was not a fan at all. And if you have a toddler, if you have a baby in the house, all right, once they got Tommy just turned a year and a half earlier this month, which is wild stuff. Uh, but at that point, you know, they're drinking a lot of liquids. They're still taking about three bottles a day, drinking about 24 ounces of whole milk. That gets them a lot of good fats, which they need for brain development. Uh, they're consuming 1,200 calories a day, somewhere in there. They can be fussy eaters. Uh, he eats a lot of yogurt. He has a lot of great fruit, uh, protein, he eats chicken, eats hot dogs, stuff like that. Uh, point being, over the course of the night, right, he pees a lot. So what do you need? You need a good nighttime diaper. And uh, these were horrible, <laughs> to put it lightly. They did not work at all. Uh, we gave him a shot. Uh, it's a tough compartment to be in in terms of the competition when you're, when you're dealing with consumer products. And they do more than just that. Uh, but that was my one experience, man. It was not good. And I found it ironic that I had that experience as the market was pretty much tanking tenfold on this equity. Now you take a look at this. We're talking about an equity, these price levels of $354 million, folks, okay? I'll be very careful of this equity at $354 million because guess what? They can do all the forecasting they want, okay? But the bottom line is, uh, wider than expected losses right now. And you don't necessarily have to believe the optimism, especially for smaller companies like this can, that can have much more variance, and especially smaller companies like this that have charts like this. Okay? I mean, look at every single earnings here, right? There's one earnings back June of 2021, they tank. August, they tank. November, you get a slight lift, lift before you tank. That's when the market was going up, by the way, last year. Remember? Yeah, and this stock went from $23 to finish the year at 8 okay? March, anyway, you get the point. Enough time spent on that company. Uh, Illumina, down 15% in the pre-market. Gene sequencing technology, 
Quarterly profit and revenue lower than expected. Outlook that was short, well short of analyst estimates. Challenging economic environment is offsetting growth and the use of the gene sequencing platform, ILMN. And this is the future. But man, you got to watch out for these multiples big time. Talk about a move, man. Up to over 500 bucks twice last year. You're down 10% on their numbers, back to a 15-minute chart. You do get a lift, though. Things were much worse last night, down to 174. Uh, I think they had a little something to say maybe on that conference call that, that maybe saved the day a bit. Still down 10% on that equity. Uh, what else have we got on here? Legal Zoom, they're up a little bit uh, after they reported better than expected numbers. Wheels up, you got a private jet company up a little bit. Poshmark down about 1.4%. Let's see how they're trading. P O S H is their symbol. As the markets slide a bit on the open. Yeah, there you go, down about 7%. Let's see how some of the retailers are trading right now. Macy's down about 6 tenths percent. Amazon gives back their overnight gains on the open. Apple still up about six tenths percent. Microsoft up two tenths. Disney catches a little bit of a lift following the pullback yesterday, up about 2.1 percent. Uber's been on quite a run recently. You check out this daily, man. Right? Talk about a break out of a channel line, folks. I wish I was watching it a little bit better myself. Uh, didn't quite come back and test the channel line, so not sure I would have taken that one. The ideal scenario, right? Our man Bud Rolfs. Uh, you come out of the channel line, you come back, you test it. If you bounce from that test, that's the buy. This thing just blows right out of it on earnings. Man, it's not stopping. They had gangbuster earnings, and since then, you've been rising in a big way. I mean, this thing is up 12 bucks from 20 uh, on June 30th, let alone being up about $10 from where it was trading at just August 1st on Uber. DoorDash, different deal, man. You know, I ordered an Instacart order yesterday. For the first time in a little while, we have one kid who still is testing positive for COVID with a slight fever. He's doing well. He's going to be fine, um, but just a little difficult to be running around the kids doing a bunch of shopping. That's where I find Instacart most valuable. But boy, those fees, when you got rising costs on food, man, last year, last month, month over month, you had 1.1%, right? These rises, folks, they're going to hurt some of these companies when you're talking about it was tough enough to stomach maybe the convenience charge that you were paying for some of these services right i mean uber is a little bit of a different deal when you talk about rides because it's not like most of the time you're just making a choice for convenience most of the time you're taking that uber because you kind of have to right either you're going out at night and you're drinking please take an uber don't drunk drive folks whether you're just uh, taking a run to the airport right the fees are something you don't have as much choice in but when you talk about food delivery, that is usually a choice that is something out of convenience. And I wonder if we're starting to reach a tipping point. I mean, you see it in DoorDash, man. Okay, you see it. I mean, Uber's getting a lift from their ride hailing business. They have quite a load of business from food delivery as well. But the fees that you pay on top of the inflation, somehow in my brain, man, they flipped a switch in Instacart. I'm trying to make it to the, the grocery store because things are expensive enough. As is. DoorDash down 1.1% today as the market is rising. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. We'll talk a little bit about water levels over in the Rhine River and Lake Mead here in the U.S. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com. Educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
Paperwhite's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&P right now. You're up by 26 points. You catch a little bit of a lift right now back to where you were at about 4.30 in the morning. You see the volatility on the open right now. Even in the last 12 minutes, you got about a 12 uh, to 14 point bar right now on the S&P as the market tries to find out where supply equals demand. And NASDAQ 100, you're up by 8 tenths percent right now. The Dow up by 172. So, yeah, we're going to talk a little bit of water. Now, this one's interesting, man. So this this headline gets me going first this morning. OK, so the Rhine River. Withers to crisis level as Europe craves energy. Not exactly the combo that you want. Give me one second here while I pull things up. Uh, shallow walk water to effectively halt barges at a Ger at the German waypoint. Climate crisis exacerbates European energy supply crunch. OK, now you check this out. The marker at Cobb, west of Frankfurt, is forecast to drop to a critical depth of 40 centimeters, just under 16 inches. I was actually shocked that you could be that low and still have barges getting through. That's supposed to happen early today, according to the German Federal Waterways and Shipping Administration. At that level, most barges that haul goods from diesel to coal are effectively unable to transit the river. And it's going to set to continue dropping to 37 centimeters the following day. OK, I mean, that's almost a 10 percent drop from 40 centimeters, folks. OK, uh, yeah, they have a big crisis going on. Probably not, not what you want to see. Some barges will still be able to navigate the Rhine at Cobb, I guess, at, at about a foot of water. I mean, folks, a foot of water is not a lot pull through if you're familiar with most boats at some point you got an engine under there you got a hull under there not exactly the biggest boat's going to be able to get through uh but yeah that's illustrating what they're dealing with used by vessels to haul vital commodities the rhine takes 800 miles from its source high in the swiss alps through some of europe's most important industrial zones before emptying it to the north sea near rotterdam and you got a bunch of companies that are using it levels at cob dropped to 35 to 55 centimeters in the next two weeks some barges won't be able to cross it at all Others are just going to have to carry less cargo. And you have a mix of glacial runoff and rain feeds the river, but contributions from glaciers have been dwindling. Yeah, it's relying off of glaciers, folks, that are going away. As sad as that is, man. Summer melting outpaces winter ice formation during climate change and below average snowfall as well. Uh, that's contributing to less 
glacial attrition, uh, meaning the waterway is particularly likely to fall to crisis levels. Now, there's your Rhine River, okay? You can see where it goes in terms of the Swiss Alps all the way down the line. There's your Rhine River. There's Cobb that they're talking about there, right near Frankfurt. You're sandwiched between France, Belgium, Netherlands. You're in Germany. You empty out in Rotterdam. It's important stuff. Um, that's wild. So Charles River, they're saying in the, the den, our man Dan, that yeah, the Charles River's at some crazy little levels. News reports standing in the middle, waterway up to their ankles. That's a bummer, man. I was fortunate to go to a beautiful high school, Noble and Greeno in Denham, Massachusetts. We were right on the Charles River, man. Um, beautiful experience, beautiful river. The rowing team there, right? You get the Charles. Um, beautiful. Yeah, lots of beautiful stuff, man. So you jump from that story, right? So that's going to have an impact, of course, okay? And if you haven't heard about it, folks, it makes me think of what's going on in Lake Mead, okay? Now, if you're not familiar with it, I'm just going to pull up a few different headlines they've caught. Now, the ones that keep popping up right now, okay, is that bodies keep popping up because they were dumping plenty of them out in Vegas, and they keep popping up because the water is reaching levels it hasn't reached almost ever. So this article was May, but I, I'm seeing I'm seeing recent articles even, I think. What do I got pulled up here, right? Let's see. Uh, well, I do, yeah, here we go. Uh, either way, they do keep popping up at those levels. Now, what's so remarkable here is it feels like this is a recipe for disaster and still no one's acting to the level that they have to. Yeah, they just found the fourth one last week. That's what I thought. Um, now, this article is from May, okay? And this is the one that really piqued my interest in this. They got it on my radar saying, what is going on, man? Is there, is Are we really doing what we need to be doing here? When you talk about a water crisis coming at you, basically like a, a, a Mack truck coming at you head on. Here's the intake, okay? Now, let me pull this up real quick. And this is actually the, the article that I wanna pull up, okay? That's talking about the bodies. When is this from? April, April of this year, okay? Vegas water take intake now visible at Lake Mead. So this is the first time that you have the intake valve. That is an intake valve that is meant to pull water in, okay? Uh, it's a drinking water intake. It's the number one that they have, and that was above the surface level uh, of the Colorado River Reservoir behind the Hoover Dam on April 25th. Now, what's so remarkable here, okay, is they have a few different intakes that are at different levels, uh, and I think they get into it right here. So the surface level of Lake Powell as well in all of this, right? I encourage you to do some Google and check out some of these articles. I don't have enough time. Uh, maybe I'll do a, a segment on this just because it's so interesting. And it, it affects seven states, I believe. Uh, Lake Mead, Lake Powell, upstream of the largest human made reservoirs in the U.S., part of a system that provides water to more than 40 million people. OK, uh, at Lake Mead, the new pumps, OK, are fed by an intake drilled nearer to the bottom of the lake that was only completed in 2000. Folks, you're talking about water supplies to 40 million people and we barely make it by the year 2000. And in the context of time, folks, a year to two is like nothing. OK, when you're talking about that, the third straw, as they call it, draws drinking water at 895 feet above sea level below a point at which water would not be released downstream from the Hoover Dam, okay? Uh, and, you know, I pulled up a bunch of articles just trying to see the, the best way to even talk about some of this stuff. Uh, here's some vi visuals, uh, just cherry picking Google articles. This one is from July of 2022, all right? That is what the lake looked like in July of 2022. And as you fast forward, you can see Situation. This is basically your comparison of 2000 to 2021. This is Lake Mead we're looking at, okay, to where it is in 2022. I mean, that is a complete dry up on certain areas of that. Just, just remarkable action in a big way. Uh, so, you know, whether you believe in climate change, folks, and I don't know how you deny that one, all right, and you're going to attribute to whatever you attribute it to, but there are crises out here that are shaping up. And this one in, in particular, and, and for the states that are out there relying on that water, relying on that energy, okay, uh, there is a severe crisis coming down the line, folks, because guess what? You can't just lower the intake valve again in like 10 years. 
you can't lower the intake valve below the bottom of the lake, which is basically where we just put it. Uh, lake Mead between Nevada and Arizona reached its high water mark in July of 1983 at 1,225 feet. On Friday, the level was a thousand feet, about 30% full. Some of the steepest cliffs bordering the lake show 170 feet of mineral burn. That is basically how far below some of those are from where they were. And this article, again, was in April, and it's dropped even further from there. Pretty remarkable action, man. Water. Now we get the Rhine River drying up over in Germany. Pretty dicey action, man. If I lived in one of those states and I was relying on that thing for water and for energy, I mean, said enough. We'll be right back, folks. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&P right now. You're up 25 points, trading at 4235. And yeah, just finishing that conversation, folks. You know, I have a son that's a year and a half old. Uh, I'd like him to live to 80 or 90 or 100 years old. Uh, trying to plan for something like that when you have, you know, we we made the the Lake Mead and Lake Powell by two years. They had an intake valve, uh, and they still had one. But the point is that was dropping so quick they were going to lose the ability to intake on the valves to provide water uh, and desalination. It could totally be a factor of things to uh, great some great points in the den 
Uh, but it's not going to solve everything, folks. If you go over it, and I've looked at this as well, right, because it seems natural. And there's a lot of things. And this type of technology is probably going to get a lot more attention, rightfully so. All right. But desalinating all our drinking water is not as easy as it seems. Uh, you know, and you have California. They have a plant out there in San Diego as well. I think that opened five or six years ago. This article was written in 2021. Uh, the energy that it takes to do that very cumbersome. You could have a bad cycle where you're literally going through so much energy that you're heating the environment even more, causing more climate change, causing the need for more desalination, which again, again is furthering the process in itself. It also has the ability, if you do it in perpetuity at a level that would need to take out everything, okay, the intake of that water is actually very difficult. You're, you're, you're sucking in so much marine life somehow. Very difficult to do. Uh, and then you have what you put out, right? The result of what you're putting out, and this is the part they had at the end, uh, that basically what happens is that, yeah, the brine, the salty fluid that is flushed away from the fresh water, it's simply pumped right now straight back into the sea. It's dense, it sinks to the bottom, and it can actually suffocate life. So it's not the holy grail desalination. It could help. It's something we should do. Uh, but pay attention to what's going on. Lake Mead, Lake Powell, the Rhine River now, you know, you know, those are on basis five to ten years, dramatic changes. you got to plan for 50 to 100 years, folks, especially if you have kids. Not fair to them to ignore those problems, as has been the case in Lake Powell and Lake Powell and Lake Mead. Got a little digress there, but drinking water, that gets me a little excited, especially for my kids, you know, having it around, you know. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Thanks for starting your Friday with me. Stay tuned. we got Basil Chapman. He's up next. Live programming all day at TFNN. Have a great Friday, everybody.